Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 628 is with entertainment journalist and author Sean O'Connell. His new book is Bruce Willis, celebrating the cinematic legacy of an unbreakable Hollywood icon. What's going on, my friend? What are you doing today? I'm binging uh, The Boys, which I've never watched before. Really? Because I'm doing a, a junket for them on Thursday. And so I'm, I'm trying my best to catch up. And it's fantastic. Oh, my God. So you're still on season one? I'm on season one, yeah. Oh, my God. You have no idea what you're going to be hit with. <laughs> I can tell so far, yeah. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Where do you find time then to write with all the movies that you have to see as well as binge watch? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you just make time, basically. You know, it's, it's fitting it in in between all of this. This is kind of on in the background as I'm doing sort of mindless work, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm doing my best to catch up. There's, yeah, there's not enough time, obviously, with the amount of great stuff that's out there. So. Yeah, because even as a writer, the one thing that I always learned, it's time you're not going to get back. I mean, it's like, okay, I put three years into this. Well, okay, that's cool. What else did you do? I put three yeah. years into this. No, and most people don't understand how much time it takes to do the behind-the-scenes stuff, right? They just assume that stuff just gets... Uh, produced you know it's, especially with the books it's like oh well you just turned this idea into and it's like no 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 this took years you know years to, to put together and research so yeah you've done something that Bruce said that he wouldn't do and that is create create a story about himself I mean how is it that you jumped into that just because I admired him well I've always admired him as an actor I've always loved him and and gravitated towards his movies I think he's one of the most sort of charismatic on-screen guys um when he announced his retirement i i wanted to make sure that his career got the uh, appreciation uh, that it deserved you know because i mean he's a movie star and with that comes so much focus on his personal life and obviously the the tabloids had a field day with him and uh him and the planet hollywood run and all of this stuff but but i think it it gets overlooked or got overlooked what a talented actor he always was starting in comedy not being afraid to jump through genres you know of course he's going to get labeled as an action star but but you would see him try science fiction you would see him in serious dramas you know some of his most um rewarding and remembered roles were opposite filmmakers that he gave a shot to, whether it be M. Night Shyamalan yeah. or Tarantino early in his days, you know, to get to get on board with Pulp Fiction. Uh, he kind of boosted Ryan Johnson back in the day when they did Looper together, and now Ryan Johnson's a brand all in of himself. And I don't think Bruce gets a lot of credit for the amount of work that he did with those filmmakers to, to really expand their careers and expand his own. When did he make that transition from actor to movie star? What What film do you think that was? Uh, die Hard has yeah. to be Die Hard. Yeah. You know, he was known for moonlighting at yeah. that time, and that was a Civil Shepherd show, you know, but he kind of stole it, and their chemistry elevated it, and then he got Die Hard, and there was no, no no turning back from that point on. But what he did, you know, really quickly at that point was try and distance himself from that personality, try to distance himself from just being the mindless action hero, and that's when he would do things like you know, Hudson Hawk or Billy Bathgate or all these smaller roles because it meant that he got time opposite Dustin Hoffman, you know, or or he would do Bonfire of the Vanities because it was a De Palma film. And and so he really wanted to prove himself as a character actor, but kept going back to that action genre because those paychecks are hard to say no to. Yeah. Speaking of that character acting, I've always thought of Bruce Willis being the Brian Dennehy of our generation. Yeah, that's a great comparison. Um, you know, I'm, I'm even going to go a little bit further and say – he could have had Paul Newman's career, really? you know? Um, yeah, he had that. They both had that rugged kind of blue collar yeah. sensibility that, you know, the, they're the kind of actors that maybe Harrison Ford even too, but I think Ford is too big of a star. You just feel like you could sit at the bar with them and, you know, trade trade stories back and forth over a couple of beers and you would be comfortable opposite them. And you have to stop and think that, oh, no, they're they're some of the biggest – you know, stars on our planet. There's something abnormal about them. So, uh, you know, I think Bruce had that. I think he had it all of his all of his life, all of his career. When did you know that if Bruce Willis's name appeared on a movie poster, by God, you were going to be in those seats? Oh, instantly. Really? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, my, Die Hard was 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 and is my all time favorite film. Um, I think it just hit me at a very specific age. 
um, when I was, you know, developing my passion for movies, I started to, I think I recognized it as like a perfect movie. And then I only wanted to know why it was perfect, right? Like I wanted to analyze the screenplay. I wanted to start to really dig into shot choices. And I wanted to figure out what made him so charismatic, you know, what made him be able to be this anti-hero that was so comfortable, you know, thumbing his nose at the villain kind of thing. I was nothing I'd ever seen before. But, you know, you start to realize then that you you attach yourself personally to an actor and you want to start to follow their career. And it was almost like buying in at a stock at a really low, you know, rate and then watching it just sort of skyrocket. And, and Bruce just skyrocketed from that point on. And so I followed every step of his career from that point on. You write about how Bruce is very much self-aware. That you know, is it because he's a perfectionist or is he an introvert? No, he's definitely not an introvert. Um, I mean, if you follow his career and you see the way that he took advantage of, especially the plan of Hollywood success, yeah. before he became an actor, Bruce apparently was one of the top Manhattan socialite bartenders like he was a guy who you had to go to wherever he was tending bar um, because he was that entertaining like he was always going to be a star it just was a matter of the cameras finding him right and I think the movie Cocktail yes. that Tom Cruise starred in was based on the bar that Bruce you know sort of cut his teeth uh, tending bar so you know he had the show he had the spinning bottles he had the the repartee john goodman the other um the the famous actor said he knew bruce back when they were struggling artists you know struggling artists in manhattan and and he would go to bruce's bar just to sit and watch him work so bruce is definitely an extrovert and you know was comfortable hopping on stage and performing with musicians at the planet hollywood openings and probably you know if the movie thing didn't work out could have had a career as like an R&B singer or, yeah, yeah. you know, playing harmonica, just, you know, bouncing around from club to club and making music and probably would have been just as happy. Wow. You and your editor, man, you guys are geniuses in the way that you make the chapters sharp and to the point. I mean, it's you get right to the, the, to the details. Well, I really appreciate that. And I mean, part of it is just I wanted to, to spend as much time as I could on each step of his career yeah. um, and not get too lost. You could do an entire book on Sixth Sense you know, Pulp Fiction or even Armageddon, you know, just to sort of examine why those movies were as popular as they were. But what I wanted to do instead was sort of break his career up into different genres and then talk about, you know, some of the smash hits, but even some of the overlooked titles, mm-hmm. uh, movies like 16 Blocks, movies like Looper um, that, that don't get the attention that I still think say a lot about Bruce um, as an actor and and through the course of those chapters i wanted to also just sort of step back and analyze like what the industry was doing at that time um you know bruce got in at the ground floor of the indie film push yes. uh with with pulp fiction which pulp fiction obviously launched a million Im- impersonators you know people who wanted to do what tarantino did um and i think the actors that get a lot of attention for the work they did in pulp fiction is john travolta samuel jackson obviously but Bruce Hells holds down that incredibly compelling, you know, weirdo third segment of that film. <laughs> and, uh, and and it it allowed him to kind of write a, a check and do what he wanted to do after that point because he was a bankable movie star. So I wanted to cover as many bases as I could over the over what I think is an illustrious career. Buying the town in Idaho. How about that? <laughs> you know what that shows is just um, how famous and how wealthy he really was. <laughs> Having the ability to just invest in a town. Um, but you know what? I guess, Arrow, I guess that sort of speaks to maybe some of the introvert bit, you know, that, that maybe he does have that I'm overlooking because he wanted to get out of the Hollywood spotlight, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and this was a way for him to get back to the quiet life of – how he lived before he became one of the most ultra famous people on the planet. When I'm writing about uh, The Fifth Element, I didn't realize at the time until doing my research that that movie opened uh, the Cannes Film Festival back when it was coming out. And part of the reason why the festival wanted The Fifth Element was because they could get Bruce and Demi to come for the world premiere. And if you got them, it became a global sensation. But, you know, having this town in Idaho that he and Demi 
essentially invested in and built up meant that they could escape back to that. <laughs> Currently, I really appreciate these actors who are out of the system or try their best to be out of the system as much as possible. I think about uh, Chris Hemsworth, yeah. who, who might be one of the equivalents of, of Bruce at this point in terms of popularity. He's got Marvel money. You know, he can pick and choose his roles from this point out. He doesn't have to really work in order to keep himself sustained. But in a publicity tour for a movie like Furiosa, he escapes back to, you know, the Gold Coast of Australia and just wants to live a quiet life with his family and raise his kids and appreciate the life that he has. And I think that's a little bit what Bruce did with that town and um, and what he continues to do as he, you know, rehabs himself and gets through this health issue that he's dealing with. He's dropped out of the spotlight. Yep. He's just dealing with. Um, with these issues with his closest family as they take care of him and I, I admire that a lot wow where can people go to find out more about you Sean and, and give you some love well so my website is Cinema Blend uh, and I have a, a weekly podcast called Real Blend where we dig deep into the filmmaking process uh, obviously the Bruce Willis book is coming out on June 11th and I have two other books that people can uh, research one about Spider-Man one about the Snyder Cut of Justice League mm -hmm. uh, if you like my writing style I've got a couple of books out there but I'm on Cinema Blend on a daily basis I love it man come back to the show anytime you know the door is always going to be open for you I'd be honored thank you my friend well you be brilliant alright I'll try my best <laughs>